Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and I thought I'd do a very quick video uh, as a bit of an update into my um, SAS Desert Raiders project. Uh, mainly because I am enjoying this so much. This is, <laughs> I know I work on, um, on quite a few projects but building and painting these has been it's just such a joy uh, to complete. Um, I did a video last week about the first section I've completed. I've completed four more since then. Um, so on the screen now will be pictures of the, um, the four that I've completed uh, over the past week or so. Um, again, these have been built from the, um, the British Commonwealth box. Uh, with a few, a few bits and pieces from other kits thrown in. Uh, as you'll see, there's a dude wearing a fez. Um, that's just purely something I wanted to do for a desert force. I thought it'd be quite, um, quite unique to have a, a chat running around with a red fez on. Now the fez is actually from the uh, the SS box set by Warlord. I think it's from the um, the Hanshaw division head. Uh, I just very simply um, scraped off the um, the eagle insignia uh, on the front, and it fitted really well. And there he is. Um, I think I may may affectionately christen him as Tommy <laughs> for future games. Um, but I think again, it just shows the beauty of um, of kit bashing combining different kits together um, really gives unique figures that, that no one else will have um, that's, that's exa exactly why I do it uh, so there'll be a, a couple of pictures of the the four that I've completed and also um, a group shot of the 12 that uh, are now fully complete um, as you can see all been based in exactly the same way um, really enjoying this basing uh, that I'm using um, I've got another and the 12 bases that I've, I've got to finish. I'm doing a couple. Um, I've got to do two more um, for the, uh, the HQ and also the, um, a, a few others, a, a few special looking ones that I want to do as well for the um, for the Bren Gunners. Um, another thing that I like about kit bashing is this chap. Now, as you'll see, um, compared to the others, uh, he doesn't have shorts on. He has long, long trousers. Uh, this is because this is from the uh, the uh, the marine the usmc plastic box from warlord now the reason for this is um i did my maths and i was one figure short um for what i want to do with this project and i thought i'm chuffed if i'm buying you know a, a, a an extra sprue just for just for one guy so i went digging through my uh, my bits and pieces and th this guy looks perfect and um, his trousers are all ripped um and it, it just looks it, it just looks like he could be in the desert. So, with some very cunningly placed uh, equipment, um, he looks just like a, a British soldier in the desert. Again, another great example of, of, of kit bashing. Uh, if you haven't got the figure, don't despair. Go go digging around your bits boxes, and I'm pretty sure you'll find something to use. Um, I thought he, he he worked out really quite well. Um, just the uh, the LRDG um, uh, headdress. Uh, rucksack, uh, water bottle, and um, uh, bayonet sheath, and he's pretty much hidden. And from a distance, yeah, he's he's, he's a British soldier. Um, so with him, with with those done, um, it's on to the remaining um, figures. I've got four that I'm going to be working on um, over the next couple of days. Uh, on the screen now will be the rest of the uh, of the un, uh, unpainted uh, miniatures. Uh, this is an entire section. Um, and the HQ. Um, I've worked out that um, the whole project is going to comprise of 26 uh, individual dudes, and I've worked out that 23 of them have been kit bashed in some in some small way or another. Only three have been put together using um, full bits and pieces from the British Commonwealth box, which they, again to me. It's, it's going to be a unique force, a really unique army, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, once the, the infantry are all done, based, painted and completed, uh, I'll be picking up three uh, Chevy trucks uh, for transport. Um, once they're done, I'm calling this, this complete. It, it clocks in at about 900 points, so I'm happy with that. I can use it in small small engagements uh, for bolt action. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm up to. Um, what else am I working on? Um, I've also gone back to a bit of 10 millimeter American Civil War. Um, I don't know what, what, what got me um, thinking about these again, um, but they were they were looking at me unpainted, so I might I might revisit them. I can get them done quite quickly, um, but they are also on the list of things to do. And, and also quite strangely, um, 
my first Airfix model since about 1991. <laughs> um, I asked my family to get me a bunch of Airfix planes for Christmas. Um, I want to. I'm going to make these into um, uh, air support for my various bolt action armies. So I've got. I've got a Spitfire, I've got a, a Messerschmitt, and I've got a, uh, an American Thunderbolt. Um, and so I'm going to be putting these together. Very, very different to how I used to paint them. I used to be able to put an Airfix kit together in about 25 minutes, all in, painted. Taking my time with this one. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's being done in between other bits and pieces. So that's it for the brief update. Uh, World War II and 10mm American Civil War. A pretty pretty unique and diverse choice then um, but I hope you find that interesting um, like I said I really I'm finding this this SAS project really really interesting and I can't wait to paint more so I'll be cracking on with the um, the uh, next four today hopefully have those completed as soon as possible but as always thanks for watching uh, take care may your dice roll well and I shall catch you all in the next video bye bye for now